Welcome to the Savage Productions YouTube channel. Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Just wanted to go over a few things with you and show you what we got going on today. I um, want to give you a little update on um, a 408 stroker that we're building. We did a video um, on that one, uh, basically showing how to install freeze plugs on the motor. So um, at this point, um, basically uh, I'm kind of finishing the short block. I wanted to give you a couple little pointers on what to look out for when you're building uh, you know, any motor at all when it comes to clearancing. So I'm gonna turn the camera around and show you what we got. So on this one, uh, this is the one that we did on a previous video and um, we'll get a we'll leave a link below on on that video if you want to watch it it talks about installing freeze plugs as you can see the the brass ones that we use and then also the screwed in ones that whole video was pretty cool so check it out um, on this one we've got the short block completely done we went ahead and degreed the cam in and uh, so what I want to do now is I'm just checking clearance because I was going to install the oil pump. And we're also using a, an ARP oil pump drive shaft, they call it. Very strong. And uh, it's really important to make sure that the clearance is good. So on the first thing I do is I'll drop a distributor in right here. I'll just snug it up. And then it's kind of hard to see. There it is. So anyway, that is the dry shaft, or I should say, that is the distributor gear that comes in contact with the cam. There's a gear on the cam. That's what turns the distributor. So what you want to do is you want to make sure when it's sitting down on the block, because it does sit down on the block right there, you want to make sure that there's enough free play up and down um, on a distributor. And most of the time there are. You know, they machine these, you get a good quality distributor and they, they'll fit just right. So you just want to basically snug this down and then you want to pull up and down on the, on the shaft. And while you're doing that, you obviously want to shine a flashlight down in there and you'll see, you're not going to be able to see it too good here, but you'll see that gear moving up and down. And you got to have at least you know one and a half to two thousandths clearance you obviously don't want too much clearance but you gotta have clearance where that gear rides down on the block so that is one of the um, places that you want to check clearance let me turn this block over as you can see this is a this is a, a 78 351 Windsor block with a 408 stroker kit um, we showed you in the last video too on some of the clearancing that we had to do and check that out. This one obviously has, you know, a main support system. You also want to check clearancing on that, which it, it comes pre-clearanced. Um, so the other thing you want to do is the oil pump shaft. This oil pump shaft here, you can see how it's got it's got a little uh, lock washer on there that's adjustable it will go down see that you can see down that round area down there that is where the distributor is sticking down in a block and that fits down in it so you want to sit that down in there all the way down and the reason that that washer is there is so if you pull the distributor out from the top this rod won't come out with it because if it comes up out from the top you'll play hell getting this back into the distributor but anyway we want to put we put that in there you want to get the oil pump Of course, I'm not putting it on permanently now. There's a gasket that goes in between there. You want to get this oil pump lined up on the shaft. And as you can tell, see it doesn't want to go all the way down. 
So the reason it doesn't want to go all the way down is because of that washer. Well, if you want to call it a washer, it's just a it's one of them deals. So it's not we just basically have to push it down like that. Let me get my little dead blow hammer. That's probably going to be bottomed out inside the distributor now. Let me look down in here and see. Yeah, I can still see the washer. You don't want that washer rubbing either. But chances are, if this fits now, the washer is probably going to drop back down from the top where it won't be. Or I should say the whole shaft should drop back down. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so now you can see we are all the way down. So what I want to do is I want to put the two bolts in here, snug them up, and then I'm going to grab a hold of that drive shaft that I dropped in there and make sure it goes up and down freely. It shouldn't move a lot, but it should go up and down freely because we don't want that washer spinning on that block, grinding, grinding into the block. So let me, let me do that and I'll be back. Okay, so I got the, uh, the oil pump kind of bolted down. I don't have it tight. I just got it snug so it sits in place. Obviously, you want to make sure you don't have any clearance issues, especially on a stroker crank, you know, right here, which I've checked. We're all clear. You got to have, let me get this flashlight here. See, there's plenty of clearance there. Like I say, any moving parts, you want at least 60 thousandths between, maybe 80. And uh, that's, got, that's got enough there. I already checked it. Um, another thing is that they tell you to watch out for is this bolt um, on these main support girdles. You want to make sure that bolt is not... Sometimes you'll have to grind the top of the... Not the top, but you have to grind a little bit off of the oil pump right there above that bolt. Um, but this one is clearancing it. So that's just mainly... Um, just so the oil pump will sit down all the way. Sometimes they'll hit right here, but that one clears it. So the other thing you got to watch out for on these when you use an ARP oil pump shaft, the 351s have a larger oil pump shaft than a 302. Um, you want to make sure it's not coming in contact with anything. Let me see if I can get this light in here so it's not glaring you. All right, so that is the oil pump shaft. that is going from the distributor to the oil pump here. Um, you want to make sure it's not going to touch the crank in any way. And it's got plenty of clearance there. Let's see if I can get this here. Kind of hard to see it. But uh, I did check and make sure it's not going to come close to the, the crankshaft at all. Um, and then also, you want to make sure that it's not going to come in contact with the main cap, number one main cap here. Um, it is kind of close to that, but I've already checked. Let's see if, if I do something like this. You can see, I can actually see light through there. Um, it's hard to tell on camera, but when I look through it I can tell I've got plenty of clearance because you know the main cap doesn't move but the oil pump spins obviously so what I'm gonna do is so I've got the bolts in place here but you obviously can you can move this just a little bit side to side so if I move it like this it's gonna put the oil pump shaft closer to the main cap if I move it like that it will at a rocket further apart just a little bit but when I do that um, of course once I hook up the pickup tube and everything I'm gonna have to um, well sorry this I'm thinking of a Fox body this is a front sump 
So the pickup tube will bolt right here and just come straight up. It doesn't bolt anywhere, which actually makes it great for this setup because if you do this and that pickup tube bolts back here for a, a rear sump Fox body, eh, there's not too much movement. But since this one is going to just be a, a front sump, it's going to be right here and we'll be able to adjust it. But I'm going to move this all the way towards the front and that's going to kick the back away so that gives me even more clearance on the main cap so that oil pump rod doesn't spin you know and come in contact with that so that's kind of what you're wanting to look at and then the other thing that's really important let me get my, my long needle nose here The other thing is, so here is the drive shaft for the oil pump and you want to make sure that it moves freely up and down. So you can see it's going up and down and it's not bottoming out inside the distributor or inside the water pump. So you can see the, the washer there. That's about what you want because obviously when the motor is sitting right now it's upside down but when it's sitting right side up it's going to be just like that and then that washer will not be grinding on the block a lot of guys will put them in now think about it and they won't move the washer towards the bottom or down far enough and that thing will sit there and just grind on the block make all kinds of shavings so you just want to make sure that that is you know got enough play there where it doesn't do it and then Obviously you want to spin the crank over, make sure we have no issues with clearance anywhere. Um, and if you look, see these, these old pump rods are so thick, they're so big, you know, they can cause problems. Um, so you kind of want to make sure you don't have any clearancing issues. Like right there, the actual crank it's really close right there but I can see that there is more than sixty thousandths. It's probably right about sixty thousandths. It's kind of hard to get a good visual here with this camera but um, I am going to stick a uh, a fuel gauge down in there but uh, I can tell it's got plenty of clearance because like I say not only is that crankshaft spinning but that oil pump rod is spinning so you want to make sure there's nothing going on there. And then also, where we talked about the other way, you want to make sure it's not touching on that main cap. Main cap doesn't spin, but the oil pump rod spins. So there's plenty of clearance there. That's why I want to have this rocked one side. But So if you, you don't really, you don't really have to do an ARP. Um, you know, these are a little bit more critical because they're so big compared to a 302. Um, so the stock oil pump rods are pretty strong, even though they're, you know, they are larger. The problem is with these, the, the ARPs are just bigger around. The diameter is huge compared to a stock one. Even though the stock 351 is bigger around a larger diameter than a 302, um, they, don't come in, they don't come close enough to even worry about hitting the crankshaft or anything like that. Um, they're just not as big as an ARP. So, if you do use an ARP on a 351, you just want to check clearance. Make sure you're not rubbing anywhere. A lot of people, must, they just don't even think about it. Okay, so I got the oil pump on, all bolted down. Um, got all the, all the clearances all good. The tightest spot was um, where the oil pump shaft is to the main bearing, number one main bearing cap. Um, I had 60 thousandths there, so we're good. Um, had a little bit more between that and the crank. And also, when I spun the crank around, I wanted to make sure everything was good, like right in here. And we had enough clearance there, obviously. So, another thing, too, that you want to watch out for, when you get these oil pumps, um, they come with two gaskets. And one gasket is for the pickup side, for the, the oil pump pickup tube. And then the other gasket goes between the block and the oil pump. Um, 
On these, it's a little bit, you can pretty much tell which one's which. On a 302 motor, they do look different, but they can fit either way. And um, you really, I mean, it's kind of important. Basically, what I do is I just get the gasket and um, I, I match it up and make sure that the opening in the center is totally open to the, uh, the hole in the block. And um, you, sometimes you'll have to flip the, the gasket back and forth, flip it around until it, everything lines up good. Because um, if you just put it on there, you might have a little bit of the gasket overlapping over the hole. You really don't want that. So make sure you get the gasket where it needs to go. Now this one is definitely a different one. Um, the bolts that go into the block are larger. And it's usually like that on the 302 as well. But on this, this gasket, it's, you know, like I say, you can get this gasket and put on here and vice versa. Um, but you do want to make sure that you got the right one. This gasket had larger holes for the larger bolts. This gasket has smaller holes for the smaller bolts here. And, you know, you also want to put it on here and line everything up and just make sure, you know, that you don't have any overlap like, like this. That seems to happen a lot. Sometimes you'll have to trim the holes where the bolts go to get that inside or outside of that hole correctly. Um, sometimes you have to flip them around because the hole in the center of this gasket may not be perfectly centered um, when they make them. It's just the way the machine stamps them out. So you want to check that. That's another thing you want to do. And also, so we're using a Canton oil pan. For this it's a front sump because it's in an old truck and like I say it basically just bolts on here like this but if you notice this thing has a notch in it so just like that has a notch for the for the crankshaft so when you bolt that on you want to make sure that there's no interference anywhere on the crankshaft or right here as it rotates around these do have, they don't they don't have a problem at all hitting so um, but that's just another little something that you want to watch out for okay well I'm back the next day um, went ahead and got quite a bit of stuff done on this motor as you can see I just finished putting the oil pan on and um, I got the front cover on I got the harmonic balancer pressed on um, I've already checked all the clearances with the oil pan to crankshaft, um, the main support system that's in there, the girdle, main support girdle, and uh, everything checks out really good. So I want to kind of show you what I've got done here and um, kind of show you what's going on with the timing covers on these old 351s. Went ahead and got, like I said, I got this all pressed on, got it torqued down, um, got everything lined up perfect right now I've got some silicone this particular gasket calls for a little bit of silicone on the top and the bottom it's an old-school gasket um, it would probably be fine wouldn't leak but I didn't want to take no chances so I just put just a little bit on the top and the bottom of it uh, not very much just a little just a little bit of a skin there um, so what I, I don't have the, the water pump on yet but what I normally do is I'll put a little silicone around the block where the, the water goes through. And then I'll also put a little bit of silicone on the, um, between the timing cover and the gasket, you know. So uh, that way it seals the water up good because uh, these get pitted in here, um, especially on the block side. So you want to make sure you have a little silicone there on the gaskets, on both sides of the gaskets. And uh, so what I do is I just run some bolts in here to snug it up. Um, you know, and then once everything sits for about, I don't know, 30 minutes or so, then you can go ahead and tighten them down. So I've got everything tightened down good. Got the, uh, the pointer on here so that to set the timing. Um, yeah, so uh, everything's been on here. It's been set up. It's all good. I'm, tomorrow I'm going to come back, take these off, go ahead and put the, the water pump on. And uh, that way the front of the motor will be pretty much done. So this one takes a mechanical fuel pump. And originally we were going to put a fuel pump on here, a mechanical one. I think it's an 85 gallon per hour pump. Um, 
but I, I think what we're going to do, we're going to buy a nice block off plate on here, just like we did on that 427 motor, and we're going to go with electric fuel pump on this thing because you know mechanical fuel pumps they they will rob horsepower. It takes power to pump the uh, the arm on the mechanical pumps. This is just an extension, just like on the Fox bodies. There's an extension that comes out for the oil pressure sending unit. I got to get a new sending unit. The other one was pretty nasty looking, and I'm gonna just put a new one on there. They're not that expensive, but um, but it really looks nice. Um, this oil pan is a front sump for the old truck. It's not a um, seven quart. It's actually a six quart pan, which would be fine. And it will fit in the truck just fine, even though it's a little bit wide, but it has a baffle in it and everything. That's why we went with this one. But uh, yeah, it actually came out really nice. And I've got the heads on. I don't believe I had the heads on when I was uh, doing the clearancing on the oil pump, but I've got the heads on. Let me go ahead and roll this motor over. So that's what it looks like, right side up. Nice oil pan there. I really like the way that looks. It's gonna look really nice with the water pump. This is the water pump here. It's actually going on it. It's the old school style for the V-belt. Um, yeah, I just gotta get that on there. That'll look really nice, with, uh, especially with all the pulleys painted black. And let's see, so I got the heads. I've already checked piston to valve clearance. Everything's good there. Um, I've got these already set. Um, none of these are, they're still loose. Um, basically, had the lifters in there, put the push rods in, or one push rod, actually. I measured for push rod length, so I gotta get those in. But I used my checker, and my push rod checker, and I, I put it in here and um, basically squared, make sure everything was squared perfectly so it rides evenly on here, and then you tighten these up. These are a little bit of a pain because they're two, you know, two separate pieces, so every time you tighten them, it tries to turn them. Um, there's, you, know, you just have to take your time and re keep rechecking, rechecking to make sure that when the push rod is in, you have that adjusted so the roller rocker will ride in the center of the valve stems. Um, we actually did a video on that, on how basically to, um, you know, get the push rod centered up and everything and adjusting the rocker arms. So um, go ahead and check that out. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and you can go through the, the different videos and you'll be able to see it. We'll put a description in the uh, link below it, just so you can click on if you want to see how that's done. But yeah, other than that, I mean, pretty much ready to go here. Um, I want to go ahead and uh, order up the push rods and get the get the lifters dropped in. I've got them soaking in oil here, so we're using uh, you know this is going to be a hydraulic roller cam, and since this is not a roller block, it doesn't have it doesn't have you know any of the screw holes here. You got usually one on this side, one in the front for. Um, the spider that holds the roller rockers from turning on late model 351s and um, 302s. So instead of you know using that, there's actually a retrofit kit you can buy, but you'd have to drill a hole in here and tap. And it's kind of thin in here, so I really don't want to do that. Um, I just you know we just go ahead and spend a little extra money and get link bar hydraulic roller lifters. These are really nice. They're high performance. Um, these things are good for about 7,000 RPM, 6,800 RPM actually. Um, they're not a short travel, but they are a good hydraulic roller lifter and they will withstand some, some RPM for sure. So we're just going to have them soak in there for a while and then uh, by the time I get the push rods in, uh, I'll be ready to get those in there and then I'll get these all centered up and lined up where they got to go and yeah, at that point it'll be ready for the for the uh, the intake. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to go ahead, I'll just, I'm going to wait 
I'm not gonna, um, I was thinking about just cutting this video off now, but I think what I want to do, I want to wait and get the, uh, get the push rods on, get the roller rockers on, get all that done, and that way we can get some, uh, some video footage of that and get the intake on. It's going to look really sweet. We're using a uh, Elderbrock Performer RPM air gap intake, and then the carburetor is really nice. It's a quick fuel, um, a Holly quick fuel brawler. I think it's called, I'll have to look, but it's really a nice looking carburetor. So I want to get all that on there so, you know, and throw it in this video. So that way you can really see what it looks like. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be really nice looking. So, but uh, yeah, that's pretty much what we got going on. So um, I will see you in another day or so. Uh, I'll, get, I'll pick up once I get, you know, the, uh, the push rods and stuff in and get all that on and get the intake on, I'll, I'll pick up on the video there so we can get some footage of it and we will see you then.